Get ready with me while we talk about the top three things that I did to stop obsessively thinking over my narcissistic ex. Part two. So this next part we're going to talk about is so important that I literally have an entire section in my course devoted to just this. One of the most common side effects of trauma is emotional irregularity and difficulty managing your emotions. And if you know, you know, girl. <laughs> so you can feel sad one minute and then not long after that, you feel this huge level of relief that you're not with them. You can be a little bit more irritable than normal, or maybe you're more quick to anger than you usually are. This is classic for trauma survivors. Now, my course goes really heavy into the reasons why this happens, but I want to focus on what to do about it right now. One of the worst things that we can do is try to ignore these negative emotions because we tend to accidentally invalidate ourselves by saying things like, I shouldn't miss them. They were so horrible to me. And so we try to shove that aside. And that's no bueno. We don't want to ignore them, but we do need to learn how to manage them. So one strategy that I would use is I would actually make a deal with myself. Like, let's say that I was like feeling really sad that day. I would say, okay, I'm going to give myself 20 minutes to sit in this feeling. And then after that's done, I'm going to go do something productive. And when I say productive, like it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Like it can just be going for a walk or it can be cleaning the dishes or it could be putting up the laundry that's been sitting out for the last five days. Just something to physically redirect you. One strategy I got from Dr. Kiri McAvoy, which was really good, was actually using math. So like you can count backwards from a thousand by 10, or you can do the multiplication tables of 11. Just something to make you concentrate on something else other than this feeling or this obsessive thought. And it may take a little trial and error to figure out what activity works best for you. Another strategy I used is I would actually remind myself of the reality. Like I would remind myself of everything I went through in the relationship. And what that did is that it helped remind me that even though I felt sad right now, I wasn't sad because they weren't in my life. I was actually sad because of everything that had happened. And that way I didn't get confused by my own emotions. Now, again, y'all, I have a whole section about this devoted in my course. So if you do feel like you need more specific help for that, please go check that out. But the main message that I really want you to hear is do not feel guilty about the emotions that you are feeling. None of them are wrong, but we have this tendency as survivors to gaslight ourselves and say that what we're feeling right now is either wrong or it's unjustified. What you're feeling is completely justifiable, even if you don't understand it. We just have to start training ourselves to start bringing back our logical thinking into the picture. And yes, that's the hard part. <laughs> All right, come back for part three.